International. Less than 20 years in the past, the Earth in Africa began to experience significant upheaval, resulting in fractures that traversed various nations and even dividing a person's residence in half. Since then, it has become evident that Africa is currently undergoing a phenomenon known as a continental rift. This occurs when a landmass is on the brink of splitting into multiple segments. Once this process completes, new continents, islands, and oceans will emerge, altering the global landscape permanently. What drives the division within Africa? What forces are responsible for this profound land alteration? And how will it affect the African populace and the world at large? Accompany us as we delve into the astonishing process of Africa's division into separate landmasses, a phenomenon largely unknown to many. In the year 2005, visual evidence and reports surfaced, unveiling a continental rift evolving across East Africa. Such a rift occurs when a continent appears to undergo fragmentation or division into multiple entities. This occurrence is a natural phenomenon observed worldwide. Interestingly, every continent we recognize today emerged due to similar rifts and the movement of tectonic plates. To comprehend the ongoing events in Africa, one must journey back hundreds of millions of years. During the ancient epochs, our planet Earth existed as a solitary landmass surrounded by a vast ocean. It was a singular supercontinent known as Pangaea, encircled by a single ocean called Panthalassa. Over the span of millions of years, the Earth's outer crust underwent cycles of heating, cooling, fracturing, and reshaping eventually resulting in the diverse land masses and water bodies we witness today. Despite the illusion of stability, Earth remains in a constant state of flux and transformation. The Earth's outer layer, known as the lithosphere or crust, is the sturdy ground beneath our feet, composed of approximately 15 to 20 tectonic plates in constant motion, either shifting apart or converging. These plates serve as the colossal puzzle pieces forming continents and islands. Visualize them as segments of a cracked shell floating atop the intensely heated molten rock beneath our planet's core. These plates tightly connected due to the searing temperatures emanating from the Earth's core, perpetually move, sometimes drawing closer or drifting apart. This continuous movement is termed plate motion or tectonic shift. Ever noticed how South America's eastern coastline aligns with Africa's western coast on a globe? They were indeed once a unified landmass. The separation of the supercontinent led to the creation of diverse continents and oceans. According to NASA's Earth Observatory, the Somalian plate in the east is gradually moving eastward, distancing itself from the larger and older Nubian plate, also known as the African plate. Intriguingly, both the Somalian and Nubian plates are simultaneously diverging from the Arabian plate to the north. These plates converge in Ethiopia's Afar region, forming a distinct Y-shaped rift system termed the East African Rift by the Geological Society of London, this separation between the Somalian and Nubian plates extends as a series of valleys spanning approximately 2,175 miles from the Red Sea to Mozambique. If the Somalian tectonic plate were to entirely detach from the larger Nubian plate, it would result in the splitting of the Earth's second largest continent into two separate entities. This prospect excites geologists and scientists reminiscent of the division that occurred when South America and Africa drifted apart hundreds of millions of years ago. However, such a separation, if it were to occur, is not imminent within our lifetimes. Estimates suggest it would take around 5 to 10 million years for a complete and distinct separation to manifest. A complete separation of the Somalian plate from the Nubian plate might not be the sole outcome in this scenario. Another possibility entails a partial detachment, where a significant portion of the Somalian plate separates from the rest of the continent, potentially forming a new body of water between these land masses. This new geographic entity would encompass Somalia, Eritrea, Djibouti, as well as the eastern regions of Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and Mozambique. Moreover, there's a chance that only eastern Tanzania and Mozambique might experience separation. This division could particularly benefit currently landlocked nations like Ethiopia and Uganda. The emergence of a new coastline from the creation of an ocean could significantly enhance their economies, offering fresh avenues for trade and industrial development. Ken McDonald, a marine geophysicist and professor emeritus at the University of California, Santa Barbara, suggests that the Gulf of Aden and the Red Sea could inundate the Afar region 
creating a new ocean, effectively forming a distinct small continent in East Africa. Despite the visible evidence of the rift, the growth rate is not rapid enough to anticipate an immediate complete separation. The current rate of divergence measures approximately a quarter of an inch per year. McDonald further elaborates that the ongoing process of rifting progresses at a notably slow pace, akin to the rate at which one's toenails grow. But what instigates the formation of these rifts? The scientific community remains in debate regarding this question. A prevailing model posits that an escalation in heat emanating from the Earth's core generates thermal bulges. These bulges, identifiable on topographic maps as elevated highlands, undergo stretching and fracturing of the outer brittle crust, creating a network of normal faults. According to the prevailing view among most geologists and geophysicists, bulges in the Earth's crust stem from the influence of mantle plumes beneath the continent. Mantle plumes refer to zones beneath the Earth's crust where magma is notably hotter than the surrounding magma. The intense heat from this molten magma results in the melting and thinning of the overlying crust, causing bulges to expand and fracture. This process can also trigger extensive volcanic activity on the Earth's surface above the plume. Often, the stretching of these thermal bulges precedes significant volcanic eruptions that spread across vast areas. These eruptions, frequently observed along the edges of rifts, are sometimes termed flood basalts. During such eruptions, lava emerges along the fractures of the bulges rather than from individual volcanoes, resembling the flow of water during a flood. A prominent feature evident in the ongoing African rift is the presence of a rift valley. These valleys form in lowland regions when two tectonic plates move apart or rift apart. Rift valleys occur both on land and at the ocean floor. In oceanic settings, they result from the process of seafloor spreading. Unlike river valleys and glacial valleys, which form through erosion, rift valleys are shaped by the movement of tectonic plates. Many rift valleys are associated with triple junctions, where three tectonic plates converge at roughly 120 degree angles. This convergence often leads to the formation of an entire ocean when two arms of the triple junction split apart. The third arm, considered a failed rift and termed an aulacogon, may evolve into a rift valley. An exemplary instance of this phenomenon is the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic emerged from a triple junction that initiated in what is now the Gulf of Guinea along Africa's west coast. At times, rift valleys are also discovered underwater, often dividing extensive mountain ranges known as mid-ocean ridges. These formations occur as tectonic plates diverge along mid-ocean ridges. Magma from the mantle ascends and solidifies upon contact with the cold seawater, contributing to the formation of fresh oceanic crust at the base of the rift valley. Over tens of millions of years, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge has generated rift valleys expanding up to nine miles in width. In the Pacific Ocean, the East Pacific Rise has resulted in rift valleys where the Pacific Plate separates from the North American Plate, Cocos Plate, Nazca Plate, and Antarctic Plate. Analogous to many underwater rift valleys, the East Pacific Rise showcases hydrothermal vents formed by subaqueous geological processes that release superheated water and fluids into the surrounding ocean. A neighboring rift valley akin to the East African Rift is the Great Rift Valley, arguably the most renowned of its kind globally. Extending from the Middle East in the north to Mozambique in the south, the Great Rift Valley is notable for its geological dynamism, characterized by volcanoes, hot springs, geysers, and frequent seismic activity. The East African Rift branches into two primary segments, the Western Rift and the Gregory Rift. These rift valleys are adorned with various volcanoes, ranging from Erta Ailey in Ethiopia to Mount Kenya in Kenya. Notable volcanic features also include Oldoinho Lengai in Tanzania, Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, a dormant stratovolcano, and Mount Niragongo in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Western Rift, also referred to as the Albertine Rift or the Lake Albert Rift, encompasses the East African Great Lakes, establishing itself as one of Africa's most biodiverse regions. It boasts an array of landscapes, including snow-capped mountains, savannas, highland forests, and several distinctive lakes. On the other hand, the Gregory Rift, named after the pioneering geologist who mapped it, extends from the Red Sea and the Arabian Sea to Mount Kilimanjaro. The Afar Triple Junction straddles the Horn of Africa between the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden in the Arabian Sea. At this juncture, the Arabian Plate, Nubian Plate, 
and Somali plate diverge from one another. Notably, the two arms of the AFAR triple junction are continuously widening due to seafloor spreading. One arm extends into the Red Sea, while the other extends into the Gulf of Aden. As these rifts persist, the narrow valley created by the Gregory Rift might depress enough to be flooded by the Arabian Sea. An intriguing facet of the East African Rift is the divergence in characteristics between the Western and Gregory branches, despite sharing a common developmental process. The Gregory Rift exhibits heightened volcanic activity, while the Western Rift features deeper basins housing large lakes and substantial sediment deposits. Among these lakes, Lake Tanganyika stands as the world's second deepest lake, while Lake Malawi showcases basalt eruptions and ongoing crevice formations. Geologists have recently turned their attention to the East African Rift System to study the terrestrial formation of ocean basins. This presents an exciting opportunity for scientists to directly observe and understand the mechanisms at play within rifts. This presents a unique opportunity that cannot be replicated elsewhere in the world, as most rifts have matured to the point of being filled with sediments or submerged underwater. Conversely, the East African Rift System stands as an exceptional field laboratory for studying an actively evolving rift system in its contemporary state. Rift valleys often feature lakes, formed when freshwater accumulates within these depressions. An illustrative instance occurred over a billion years ago when the North American plate began rifting. As the process continued, a triple junction formed within the young continent, creating a profound rift valley. Over time, freshwater gathered within this rift, giving rise to a lake. However, the rift ceased before completion over many millions of years, leaving the continent intact without the arms breaking off to form a new ocean. Another notable example of a rift lake is Lake Baikal, situated over the Baikal Rift Valley in Siberia. Regarded as the oldest and deepest freshwater lake globally, Lake Baikal plunges to depths of around 5,387 feet. Over the past 25 million years, layers of soft sediments have gradually accumulated on the lake bed. Remarkably, the actual floor of the Rift Valley exceeds three miles in depth. Lake Baikal also boasts the largest volume of fresh water on the planet, estimated at a staggering 5,700 cubic miles. Similarly, the Dead Sea in the Jordan Rift Valley exemplifies another rift lake formation. While not the world's deepest lake, the Jordan Rift's depth renders it the lowest land elevation globally. The Dead Sea's surface sits at 1,407 feet below sea level, with its depths reaching approximately 997 feet into the earth. However, unlike Lake Baikal, the Dead Sea isn't a typical rift lake, as the underlying rift did not fully develop. Instead, it's known as the Dead Sea Transform, a geologically intricate zone where tectonic plates interact in diverse ways. One such prominent lake is Lake Tanganyika, spanning the coastlines of Burundi, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Tanzania, and Zambia. It hosts numerous endemic species of cichlid fish, showcasing the exceptional biodiversity of the region. Conversely, Lake Natron in Tanzania stands as one of the shallow, alkali-rich soda lakes within the East African Rift. Its vibrant red hue results from pink salt-loving bacteria thriving in the saline waters, rather than the geological composition of its rocks. As the East African Rift progresses in its division of Africa, the region's significance has amplified for stakeholders ranging from geologists and ecologists to governmental bodies. There's a collective vigilance surrounding developments within the Rift Valley, given its critical role in understanding human evolution. Numerous hominid fossil discoveries within the Rift have earned it the moniker, the Cradle of Humanity. With numerous paleoanthropological findings, Scientists are currently exploring how the evolution of the rift might have significantly influenced our species' development. Among these discoveries stand Lucy, a hominin skeleton unearthed in Ethiopia, dating back over three million years, and the Turkana boy, an almost two million year old hominin skeleton discovered in Kenya. The East African Rift System, beyond its role in understanding continental breakup and ocean formation, holds substantial potential as a power source the Rift Valley's extensive volcanic and tectonic activities have attracted attention as a viable energy resource. 
The United Nations Environment Program is currently developing a geothermal energy initiative to harness the region's underground heat through a network of steam wells. Estimated projections suggest that a single well could generate enough electricity to power 5,700 households. While Africa may not split into two or more parts in our lifetime, the East African Rift will remain one of the most influential factors shaping our future in the coming decades and centuries.